Hey everyone, Norm from Tessa here at San Diego Comic-Con 2023. And I walked over to this area, the Star Wars booth, because these models caught my eye. Now, Max, you're here with Spin Master, uh, and 40 Build is the series you guys have of cardboard model kits. Yes, these are 3D cardboard puzzle model kits. Yes. So these are just like 3D puzzles. You punch out pieces, and then you snap them together. Uh, they come with uh, very detailed instructions, which are very easy to follow. Uh, models like this take you around like six hours on average to build. Yeah. We have a huge variety of characters and models here. So like R2-D2, all the iconic Star Wars characters. Droids, ships, Droids, vehicles. Ships, yeah, everything that uh, fans are crazy about. So all the fun stuff. Well, I love that, you know, Star Wars, the, the, the design aesthetic is unique, like the silhouettes, right? Like, like yes. the X-Wing from... Oh, a mile away, you're going to recognize the X-Wing, you're going to recognize the Star Destroyer. You guys have really captured the, the complex shapes even on the, the surface here. You have... Yeah, that's the beauty of working with the cardboard material. You can translate all these little important details yes. and put them into the final display unit. And everything is tab slot? Is that yes. right? Yes. So the way they are held, they're held by tabs. That's why we believe they're puzzles. So you mm -hmm. connect these pieces together and they are pretty sturdy. These are really nice display units that you can show off. And uh, yeah, this, this looks really great. I love the size of this thing because you know, they, they come in these packages and, and you're showing me some of the, the, the basically like almost standard paper size sheets they come out of. Yeah, so uh, um, this is what, the, uh, ah, what okay. you get inside right. the box. This is uh, the puzzle sheets and uh, the, uh, they're numbered, they're color coded. So everything is pretty easy to understand and not to get lost through your puzzling journey. And yet you can still build something that's yes. this size. Uh, something of this size, you said about a couple hours to build, right? So yeah, this is like a seven, uh, six to seven hour journey. Okay. Uh, something like, like yeah, this. your BBA. Uh, yeah, they take you on average three hours to build. Oh, and they have internal structure to be yes. pretty pretty solid. Again, this you're having, you have a dome shape, you have a sphere and have the bed, so like the folds here, they're, they're, they're basically cut like halfway through the paper so you can do a fold. Correct. Got it, yep. got it. Oh, very, very neat. Uh, at the show here, I see you have an exclusive. Is so this... yes, everything else you can find online and, and mass market. The only mm -hmm. thing we're selling on site is this uh, Comic-Con exclusive, oh! which is Mandor and one Starship Fighter. I love uh, it. From season three. That's and, why it's the R5 in the back. Yes, and you can see Mando and Grogu is in there because oh. whenever he goes, he follows. Yeah, yeah, yeah there it goes. Yeah, so that's what you get inside this Comic-Con exclusive box. Wow, Wow. how long has it took for you guys to develop the line and uh, the process to so develop and design one of these? It takes, on average, from six to eight months uh, to design the product because mm. we work with Lucas, with all other licensing companies yeah. to get the concept approved and then to go through the approval process. So it's quite a journey but you can look at the final product and it's all worth it. Yeah, is this the size, the biggest size you guys want to go? Or yes, this is, the, this, is... this is the biggest size we have so far, but we have some uh, cool stuff coming in Fall 24, which is going to be even bigger. Even yes. bigger, I love it. And that allows you to do more detail. I mean, I see things like the Death Star 2, where you really get yes. all the layers and really yeah. capture again the, the iconic silhouettes yes. of those, those some, uh, spaceships. Some of the stuff really steals the show. Oh, well, we love model kits and these seem like really accessible entry points for yeah. fans of Star Wars. They, they range between $15 uh, to $60. Wonderful. Uh, average price is 20, 30 bucks. So they are very affordable and reasonably priced. Awesome, well thank you so much, Max. Great thank to you. meet you. And congratulations on a wonderful line. Thank you. So it might be July here at San Diego Comic-Con, but I'm already thinking about the holidays and no better place to check that out than at Hallmark. Kurt, you're at the you're the art director of this line of Star Wars I am. ornaments. I am. Now, at home, I'm a big fan of your guys' collection. And Thank one you. of the things that my family and I are always so impressed with is how creative you guys are using the license. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously there are new shows on Disney Plus and new characters introduced all the time, but right. what we're you able to do with classic scenes every year. There's something fun, interesting, and this year, this seems to be getting a lot of attention. It is, it Tell is. me about the carbonate freezing chamber. Yeah, so we we always every year do a like a high magic ornament or we do a lot of magic ornaments but 
every year for Star Wars, we do a high magic ornament. So um, we, we try to figure out like, what can we do? What classic scene can we tell? What would be very innovative to do? Um, the Carbonite scene came up, obviously a very popular scene with, with fans and collectors. I'm a big fan myself. And so uh, that's where we started the brainstorm for this particular piece. The parameters of not just the license, but what you guys do, it's, it's an ornament, mm -hmm. so it needs to be balanced, needs to hang Correct. on a tree, needs to Correct. have power. You have all these design constraints. Yes. But other than that, like you guys have ornaments that are big tree toppers yes. and things, electronics, and obviously modern yes. technologies allow you mm -hmm. to do so much stuff. Can you right. walk me through, you know, from when someone on the team said, let's try the carbonite? Yeah. what the steps are to get to this product? Yeah, well, first of all, we have an amazing team of, of designers, of editors, of engineers that make this happen. And so we all get together, we brainstorm what a possible idea could be, and then we start talking about, okay, if this is a high magic piece, what will the function be? You know, we've got our, our light functions pretty well mastered, mm -hmm. we've got our sound pretty well mastered, and now we're, we're moving in the world of, of animatronics and movement. Yeah. And so this was a, a perfect scene for that. And so when we started brainstorming, we wanted, we knew we wanted Han Solo to go down into the, the carbonite chamber. And, and then how can we have him come back up as, you know, frozen in carbonite? So with the engineer, work very closely with this. Um, they do an amazing job of working through all the minute details. We come up with the ideas. We want everything to work out, get the storytelling down. And then we work very closely with the engineers just to see how to make that work. Um, this piece, I was actually a little worried about how big can we go with an ornament. Yeah. And um, I'm actually kind of winning some contests around the company now about how big we can go. But this one, um, it needed all the, the depth that you see here mm -hmm. for the, the movement to work yep. and that to do. Um, we also always do, already do very miniature ornaments. So we've kind of got that down as well. So we knew with this piece that it would basically feature miniature characters and, and then the whole structure around it, what would it take to make it happen? Because you need to maintain that level of fidelity Absolutely. on those portraits, which yes. you guys have expertise in, yep. in that production line. So Absolutely. it's essentially a couple different figures then put on yes. this animating display. Yes, exactly. And we work through, you know, the whole scene in that scene, there's obviously a lot of characters yeah. in that. Um, so we had to kind of pare it down to what the essential characters were on this piece. And of course, everybody knows the whole sequence yeah. with I love you, I know, yeah, and yeah. all that. And so we worked through that. Um, one of the big things we worked on was, you know, it's a fairly long scene. And so you get a lot of dialogue with this before the action starts. Mm -hmm. um, but what you see here, you kind of get the, the movement of the light going on. And then when the actual thing starts, when he starts to lower, um, the lights start flashing, you know, the action starts happening. You get that whole sequence. And then he comes up in carbonite. And I love that color change and the temperature yeah. and the light. It gets yeah, colder we, as he comes up. Absolutely. It really changes the mood and feel of it. Yeah, yeah. We, well, you know, we're all big fans, so we know the scene very well, but we work very closely to make sure with lighting, you can really tell a lot of the story there. Well, and it's a, it's a Disney license and it does kind of harken to the audio animatronics when you go to Walt Disney World and they have theatrical exactly. elements where elements are lowered and elements yes. are raised. It has that kind of similar yeah. DNA. Yeah, exactly. It's a lot of work. I mean, uh, you know, those early Disney ones, those were obviously life-size yeah, animatronics, yeah. things like that. We are doing some amazing things with movement and animatronics, um, you know, in a miniature size, you know, because obviously these are Christmas ornaments. They need to hang on a, yeah. on a tree. And so um, we, we do our best to make that happen I at love that it. size. I love it. Are you continuously looking at new technologies, Absolutely. new suppliers, so to miniaturize as much as possible? Do you yes. the development lessons from making this then help next year's Absolutely. High Magic Ornament? Well, we know, you know, again, miniature ornaments, we do that very well already. So we knew we had that. And then just to make the movement work at that size, you know, to get it as small as it is here, that's that's what we're striving for. So, and we are always looking for new technologies. Yeah. Absolutely. Have you been surprised with what some fans have done with past ornaments and modifying or, or augmenting them beyond the holiday season? Yeah, I mean, you know, fans, they, you know, and I'm, I'm one of them, I, it's, so it's a great job to have. And so, you know, you, a lot of people want to have these out year long. Yeah. And a lot of people have their Christmas trees out all year long. And it's just a great way to display them. So, um, yeah, they, I, 
fans do a lot of amazing things with them. I, I think you just saw somebody had little earrings of our uh, miniature of ornaments. Yes. They do that too. Yeah. So that's a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm yeah. definitely thinking of putting some smoke in there myself. Exactly. Uh, yeah. We actually talked about that. Could we ever get the steam to come yeah. up, you know? And so someday, you know, maybe we'll have that. Maybe we'll have, act we, we keep joking. Maybe someday we'll get actual lasers to come out of these things and do that. So, hey, someday. We're gonna need <laughs> ornaments from years to come. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, Kurt. Pleasure to meet you. Congratulations yes. on a wonderful Thank product. Thank you, appreciate it. Hey guys, Adam Savage from Tested here. If you've ever seen the six inch ruler in inches and centimeters on my forearm and wanted one of your own, but you didn't want it to be permanent, well, today's your lucky day. You can now buy temporary tattoos of my measuring stick, my measuring forearm, uh, at tested-store.com. Comes like this, goes on in about 30 seconds with a little water. The instructions are on the back. It comes off with rubbing alcohol, and hopefully it warms you up to the idea of permanently attaching a measuring device to your body, because I use mine every single day.